In this video, we will test a 3D printed pneumatic accelerator for the modular production system. During the last years, I've manually packaged and counted thousands of different screws, nuts, and washers, all for 3D printed parts that I sell online. So I use 3D printing, PCB design, and other processes to build an automatic screw counting machine. The design is based on some fundamental principles and it is parametric, so it should work for a variety of conveyed parts. In this video series, I will go over the components and how I built them. If all goes well, the videos will end with a working modular production system. While building the modules for the last video, I got an idea that I really like to try. One of the things that we built was this 3D printed mechanism that we used to feed screws into a tube. This conveying method actually worked really well and allowed us to feed the screws to a lot of different positions. And now we can use this for a lot of different things. For example, we could connect the tube to an electric screwdriver and turn it into an automatic reloading one. However, in its current state, there's one major drawback with this. Right now we are relying on gravity only to feed the screws through the tube. And this means that we always have to maintain a certain height difference between the start and the end point of the tubing. If we don't have that height difference, the screws just won't have enough momentum and get stuck in the tube. Since I don't really want to place the feeding unit at ceiling height level, this is very impractical. That means that we have to find some way to accelerate the screws inside of the tubing so that they can not only go downhill, but through all kinds of shapes. And I think the simplest approach to this is to just use pressurized air to shoot the screws through the tubing. So let's build the accelerator for that. Okay, so I designed and 3D printed this first prototype. The feeding tube is held in place by two flexor clamps that I have integrated into the part. The air pressure line then connects to a pneumatic fitting. These are the screws that we are feeding. They drop from up here and run through the tube and then through the part. Inside of the part there is a small channel that accelerates the compressed air that is coming from this line. This airflow then carries the screw with it. To switch on the air pressure at exactly the right moment, we use this valve. To stop and start the airflow, it uses a solenoid very similar to the one that we used in the first video. Testing this whole setup now, we can see that it actually works pretty well. I think this is just awesome. Using just a 3D printed part and an air compressor, we can shoot screws several meters through the tube. I tested it with the longest um, tube that I could find here. And as long as the valve is open for long enough, the screw makes the 3 meters easily. What we will do now is to combine the reorienter and the accelerator into one single part. But why should we do that? I think especially when using 3D printing for larger assemblies, we should really try to build small, functionally integrated and feature-rich components and um, use simpler and cheaper um, elements for the rest of the construction. And I call this complexity shifting. This is my personal opinion, so take that with a grain of salt, but I think complexity can be shifted in many different ways. You can shift inside of different manufacturing methods, shift from mechanical to electrical, from hardware to software. You can shift inside of assemblies or you can even group different areas of complexity. To make it short, I think there is a specific order and a specific density um, in how this should be done. And in my opinion, this makes for a faster design process and more reliable systems. I'm not too sure if this is interesting and if I should make a separate video about this, um, so please tell me your honest opinion in the comments. I would really appreciate this. Anyway, back to the actual topic. Okay, this is the setup right now with the reorientation part that reorients the screws from their magazine orientation and the accelerator. We now want to combine both of the parts to reduce our part count. For this I have redesigned the module. The basic principle however remains the same. This part is then mounted directly to the bottom part of the magazine. After we have printed the now combined part, the assembly is quite intuitive. First, we screw the pneumatic fitting into the 3D printed thread. 
Then we attach the tubing. For this, I model two channels in the part. They are then used to loop two zip ties around the tubing. This way of assembly is cheap and effective. The zip ties contract the tube a bit and the bulging area above and below the zip tie prevents it from being pulled out. Overall, I'm quite happy with how this turned out. It seems to be working really well. I really want to connect this to a cordless screwdriver. I think this could turn out really cool. One more thing that we have to keep in mind is that 3D printed parts are not completely airtight. Through small gaps that occur during the printing, uh, compressed air can escape. In the past, I have used various different methods to counter for this, from overwriting extrusion settings to selective ASA vapor smoothing, but all of those methods are somewhat costly and time consuming. And I think the pressure build up in the channel is not big enough to cause any significant leakage that will affect performance. This might change if we would start to build inline accelerators or splitters, but as long as possible, I think we should stick to the normal printed parts. A whole network of tubes could create some very cool applications in combination with, for example, a print farm. On the other hand, we have to be careful to not connect too many modules in series if it can be avoided, because the way those failure probabilities combine is not really nice. For longer tubes, it might make sense to actually pulse the airflow, and that might save air. Also, we could think about a multi-stage accelerator approach, where we are using multiple accelerators instead of one at the beginning. So I think there's still a lot of exciting stuff to do, and if you want to see me build those prototypes, then hit the subscribe button. And I will see you in the next video.